spoke with Sister Medea. I want to say why I use that phrase, sister, and then I change it to a different type of acronym, S-I-S-T-A-R. And I wore my, I'm a child of the 60, 60s and definitely boho hippie all the way, all right? Because I will tell you that the message, and as I looked around the signs of love and peace, I am the mother of India Jasmine Kager, and I will share her picture with you. Um, this is my beloved daughter. Um, and I don't know how I'm going to get this just to stay. Maybe we can just do that here. And I brought specifically her military picture for a reason. Um, my daughter did serve in the United States Navy. Um, to, just to tell you a little bit about India, and then I'll just go into how we can intermarry and, and, and cross-pollinate um, the purposes of what we're doing here in this room with one another as loving beings, loving beings first and foremost is that my daughter, India Jasmine, when she emerged, she was uh, just like her mom, a tree hugger, <laughs> very much loving, uh, played five instruments, self-taught, attended the Duke Ellington School of the Arts here in Washington, DC, uh, never spoke above a certain decibel. This would be her speech. And she exuded love and light and kindness and gentleness, and later in her l short life, ex inclusivity of all. She expressed that in her poetry. She was quite introspective and loving. <sighs> the mother, the young mother of two little boys. And I will tell you that on September 5th of 2015, I received the most horrific phone call that any parent, any human being can ever imagine when I was notified that my beloved India, Jasmine, she was a flower, <laughs> had been shot and killed by Virginia Beach Police SWAT team. Let me place emphasis on that, special weapons and tactical unit. The backstory, the truth is that India had journeyed to Virginia Beach, lives here in College Park, I reside in Columbia, Maryland, had journeyed to Virginia Beach with the father of her son, Roman Altair, <laughs> meaning the celestial, to introduce little baby Roman to Angelo Perry's family. They were having a family reunion. He had not up to that point accepted paternity or even acknowledged paternity of the baby until later. Um, it was one of those situations where he was married, so let's just face it, it happens. And my daughter made the courageous, honorable decision to give life to her son and then to co-parent with Mr. Perry Angelo, Angelo Perry. They traveled and um, within less than three hours, of being in Virginia Beach after having visited house to house, unbeknownst to India and Angelo Perry, the Virginia Beach Police SWAT team were surveilling them. They witnessed my daughter carrying little Roman's car seat from house to house, and they waited until India and Angelo Perry drove into a 7-Eleven parking lot, and then an unmarked police SWAT vehicles, a van, and a white, um, an SUV, a blue SUV and a tran, they ran into the back of India's car while simultaneously detonating flashbang grenades, throwing them at my daughter's car, fully aware, fully cognizant that there was a baby in the car, an innocent civilian, innocent, okay? And then, uh, and I'm gonna try to, I have to rein this in, four SWAT officers exited the vehicles and they fired well over 30 rounds into my daughter's car with military provided weapons. Or what did, what did you teach me? Um, the AK, the, the weapons that they use were AK, what, I, I'm, I'm, excuse me, I'm trying to, I'm sorry, someone said. Okay. From the Pentagon. From the Pentagon. Now, I want you all to take this journey with me Let's sit in the car with India and the baby and Mr. Perry. They are sitting in a car, my daughter, as a mother. Um, if any of you all do know, I'm sure you all know what a flashbang grenade does. It renders one's auditory and visual, you cannot hear. And the narrative that the police state is that Mr. Perry fired from the car. That was complete vilification and an attempt to nullify the horrendous murderous actions that they now are choosing to sanitize under the guise that he fired at them first. 
I stand here to let you know that my daughter turned to protect Roman. And I stopped counting India's bullets at number eight. She did receive a, a bullet in her head, but the baby was saved. That's, that is what haunts me every day as I share with Sister Medea that I have to resurrect myself as a mother and then I'm haunted and tormented by the thought, what was her last vision on this realm? What was the last thing India saw? And Mr. Perry, I want you all as my brothers and sisters in love and unity to know this, there was no arrest warrant out for Mr. Perry. Now I'm not here to defend that. I'm here to make a stand as a mother as a, uh, as a woman from Des Moines, Iowa, and I shared this with Sister Mia, De, Ma, De, 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 yes, corn, cows, potatoes, and a few black folk reside in Des Moines, I'm one of them, okay? I was socialized in an environment where I would typically be the only little girl African-American. So I would be the token black. And because I was well-spoken and highly read and nerdy, I mean, I think I must have <laughs> imbi I've imbibed books as a child. It was an escape for me, okay? India was the same. And yet, the last vision of my daughter was what we see in Nationwide. They had no choice, nowhere to run, no play, way to take cover, as their lives were extinguished by people who have divorced themselves from any semblance of love and humanity. We live in a, in a community where we're technologically connected, but disconnected from the one thing that we all have in our hearts, and that is true love. And it starts with each one of us individually and then collectively. And every person in this room has a mother. You may be my mother. You know mothers and fathers and sons and daughters. What do we say when our military uh, are killing innocent people nation globally. And I had a few notes. I just need to just speak extra, you know, out of my heart. I'm, I'm not even going to go there. Well, actually, I am. I'm going to just share one thing. This is a photo that I did bring. This shows my daughter's execution was caught on camera, the 7-Eleven surveillance camera. They executed my daughter in India my, and Mr. Perry in less than five seconds. And no one ever hears that truth because our media, they're invested in the spin. The police never have said or stated that they have ever killed a person that was upstanding character. The first thing they want to do is what? Paint a story that, that somehow legitimizes their actions. And as a mother, I've stated that I am out to dismantle the lies, to lock arms with organization, Code Pink, and, and I'm just, I am, it has taken me two years just to even get to the place where I can speak and function because when you are hit with the trauma in such a way, everything, you, you, torrential tears are not even the tip of the iceberg. It absolutely devastates your entire lives. And then we distance ourselves, we turn a blind eye to what's happening globally. When the mother's, my daughter's casket was draped with the flag and that idiot in the White House are, is wants to paint the story that the protests are about the flag, the national anthem. What is more disrespectful than telling the mother he knew what he signed up for? Flashbang grenades, tank bombs, you all can name the weapons, I'm sure, far better than I can. I choose to use the weapon of my voice for my daughter, for all children. And the one thing that I know I have, and that is unfettered love that India also exuded. For everyone, for everyone. And her last action was protecting her baby. And as I shared, as a mother, we labor in birth. Now we're laboring in their death. And we will do this for everyone. And I want you all just to think, what would you do? You can't take cover and hide. 
if a bomb is coming from wherever it may be, Yemen, I read a little bit on, well, no, I've been following that. And I want you to know, Brother Barack, um, I did, and I'm, I, I want it very clear that you cannot politicize or monetize the death of our children, the murder. I did vote green, period. I was not, I see the hypocrisy and the duality in that I stand. I want to share with you that I am not a mother who is spewing hatred against law enforcement, but I hate hate. Absolutely hate that. I'm a student of history, so I read everything. Amos Wilson and, you know, the women who have fought Sojourner Truth. I mean, women who took a stand, even the 1920s, just to even vote the suffrage movement, just to even do that. I want to make it very clear that there is a, the, the oligarchy that we fight. This particular family is Colin Stole and, his fa his, the, and, and the brother of the current Virginia Beach Police Chief, Sheriff, and all four of the officers, just want to say that, are home with their families. They are home with their families and still working. But what about the families who no longer have homes to, to return to because they've been bombed? What about us mothers when our children are murdered and everything in your life crumbles? Everything, everything. My house has gone into foreclosure. Um, and the contradictory thing is that as a profession, I'm a mortgage banker. I help a people not only keep their homes, but build homes where it's not just the structure. My passion is what happens inside of those four walls, the sharing, the memories that we no longer have, and then other people who have to take cover, and mothers who weeping over the caskets, or they may see a limb because their child has stepped on a bomb, or what do we do? Well, I will tell you what I do and what I must do. I made up my mind to keep my mind. It was a decisive d decision with pillows saturated with tears because the flag of the United States is saturated with blood. No question about it. Do you I'll share this with you. You all have heard about the killing that occurred in the congressional ballpark in Ju July where Representative Steve Scalise was saved and there was a Capitol Police officer. They were honored. One was the name of David Bailey. Well, my son's name is Brandon Bailey, India's big brother. And David Bailey is his uncle, my brother. -in -law. And so my daughter is executed in the Commonwealth of Virginia, and then we have India's father was a DC police officer and grandfather. I myself am a former dispatcher for the Tacoma, Tacoma Park Police Department. So I know some of the inner workings and the conversations and what they do. It can no longer be about monetary gain, the large corporations. It can no longer be that that's the sole focus. Every last one of us is faced with our own mortality. But it doesn't need to be hastened through the cruelty and greed of people who are only looking for monetary gain. So I make an appeal, not to those who are in this room, you all wouldn't be here, <laughs> to not turn the blind eye or deaf ear when you realize or don't realize we have the disconnect Unless there's a face of the pain, you only have your imagine, imagination whereby you could even begin to visualize what it's like. I resurrect myself every single day, but I can never resurrect my daughter. And the mothers across the globe, the world, and the fathers can never resurrect our loved ones. But we can speak for their spirits as they rise. And we can show more, have the conversations across the table, understand and know, and not just have a mental assent, but listen to our hearts. That the very same blood that's coursing through our veins, it runs red. And not just let it be ideology. Because India, sweet, loving, gentle spirited, introspective, highly articulate, intelligent, 
India has two little boys, Brandon, I mean Evan, who was on the autism spectrum. I will never forget the day that I have a large poster of India, this very same one that someone made for me, and Evan would walk over and kiss his mommy's poster. And he would crawl on my lap and wipe away my tears. And in his little world, his microcosm of understanding, not understanding the permanence of death, wiped away my tears and looked up at me, lifted my, you know, children who are a very special gift. And he wiped my tears and he says, Grandma, don't cry. I will help you find mommy. Our children the intergenerational trauma that's being exacted upon our fellow human political parties that are just in it for the next the, the gain of their position when our positions are on our knees to cry out and try to find a way to navigate this pain The pregnant pause and silence is acknowledgement, as I've stated, not only for the divinity in each one of you all, but every single, the millions of lives, Yemen, Afghanistan. I need to share with you that my youngest daughter, her name is Summer Aliyah Mustafa. So the tapestry of my family is very broad in that my youngest daughter's father's from the Middle East. She's fluent in Arabic. <laughs> To see a young teenage girl now have to even try to keep her mental faculties together when she was just with her big sister and the confusing questions of why are we doing this to one another? Why? Well, we've been asking that for eons. And there's a saying that those closest to the problem are also usually closest to the solution. One of them is, and we all have that, is a determination to not be silent. Because if, if Coretta Scott, no, excuse me, uh, Rosa Parks had just decided to write a very strong lettered word to, what was it, the, the bus, Brother Rocker, help me with that, Montgomery, there would have been very little done. But she sat, she sacrificed, and our soldiers, and again, I, um, my son is also was in the army. Um, usually that's an option that you turn to if you don't have very few other options, unfortunately. We have options. And the same way that the Virginia Beach Police SWAT team decided to divorce themselves from realizing that the same young woman that they had and the young baby that was in the back of the car in their line of sight, all those weapons we're talking about those, please help me with this. What are the weapons called the, that have the flashlight on the end of them, the, the rifles? Okay. okay, with the flashlight, the blinding lights and those moments of confusion, the blood that's spattering. You know, my grandson, when they, <laughs> they had tissue in his hair, no doubt from his mommy and his daddy. And now F Roman is hearing impaired because of the percussive effect of the flashbang grenades. It's not just my baby. It's not just my grandson. It's our human family. Of which every last one of us is a part of. Think of your mothers, please. Your sisters, your brothers, not just in your core family, but overseas too. Shame on these corporations for, shame on them. I can't speak anymore. <laughs> I have so much more to say, but I just do need to. Uh